what's up <laughs> uh apologies for uh for that uh sean wanted to say sorry but uh you know i mean he does everything so uh not a, not a problem at all i'm sure you guys enjoyed that a little behind the scenes for you uh welcome to another episode of miller's music mondays um check it out check it out right behind me uh it's real it's real now got real wood behind me uh mr brad bailey uh who is a genius uh built me a real wood uh backdrop really a real wood wall so i'm no longer i'm no longer a charlatan i'm no longer a fraud everything you see before you is real is all here it's real uh okay let me start off with a song from the new record by the way, it's right here. And if you haven't received yours yet, I am get. I have six orders left. I have been like slowly, slowly filling them. I, I couldn't anticipate how many people still wanted CDs. That was kind of a mind blowing thing for me. So uh, your stuff's coming soon because I only have six left. And I'll probably fill more the rest of them tonight. We'll see. Anyway, all right, here we go. Uh, this one's called Reckless. to make that one apply a little bit better acoustically by the way i'm playing a character in that song i don't really want to beat you up only when i only during the song so just don't approach me while i'm singing that and we'll be fine but anyway i want to bring on a really great friend of mine we've been friends for a long time and uh we met recording 
the show Avatar The Last Airbender together. Uh, let me bring on Zach Throne, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> What's going on, man? What's up, dude? You sound great. Thanks. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, man. You look great. You look great. You sound great. You got real wood. I'm proud of you. I got real wood. I know. I'm 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 super excited. Actually, I think I have it a little bit too bright, but I, I've been I've been adjusting that. We'll see. Um, what uh, what have you been up to, man? So you're in you're in Vegas. We met before we even get there. So right. we met at Salami Studios. At Salami, that was the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And your dad was there too. Yeah, my just... my dad was was working on Avatar, and um, I got the call uh, to go do voices, and I didn't tell him I was going to be there, so I just showed up, and he was like eating and was didn't like the fact that I surprised him because he didn't like surprises. But then we all sat in a room together and worked together. Yeah, that was awesome. And then we met yeah. Mako that day and James Hong. It was just like, what is happening today? Every great character, Asian character actor ever from like MASH and every show was, was mm -hmm. there and then me and you. Yeah, I know. I don't know what we were doing there, but we, yeah. we were lucky to be in the room. Well, I know what you were doing there. I, I, you know, I've had a few of those moments where I'm at a voiceover gig and, you know, like I'm surrounded by greatness and just going, oh yeah. all right, don't screw it up, dude. <laughs> There's a, there was a couple that you and I did um, for Andrew Romano, where it would be like me with my long hair, you with your skinhead, and we're mm -hmm. wearing like rock shirts. And then there's like these old, like, you know, Chuck McCann and all these older voice actors that are there, you know, and like, mm -hmm. why are we here? They're like, who are these children that are here? Who are these youngsters that got? So they would take me out. But then we both discovered that we're both musicians. Yeah. Uh, and we have so many different um, connections uh along the way uh from you know back on the east coast and because i grew up there too and uh you know we've just been friends ever since and so the last time i saw you in person was you were playing guitar for Corey taylor from yeah. slipknot and and stone sour one of his side projects and so or actually his solo his solo project yeah so okay. uh which is you're about to embark on tour right we are. We we leave uh, May seventeenth, sixteenth or seventeenth. That's great. Yeah, it's gonna um, be fun. you know, because uh, obviously touring is a new challenge for all yeah. of us these days. We're not. I mean, it's we know what we have to do, and we know you know the 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 um, restrictions that we, we need to comply to, and all of us are complying. But I, you know, no, I haven't been on tour since pandemic, and. Corey hasn't either, and nobody has. So it's going to be uncharted waters. We have no idea what it's yeah. going to look like. But as long as I'm, you know, we're on stage playing and 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 playing music for people, I think people are going to, you know, just that element alone is worth it. You know, because people dig. Well, they need it. We all need it. We all need you live know? music again. You know, it's just it's just crazy how long it's been. Yeah, it almost it feels surreal that it's even going to happen. You know. Um, yeah, it does. I was thinking about it, and I said, you know, man, I actually told Corey, I said. You, you know how crazy that moment's gonna be when we walk out on stage and you sing one of your songs and your fans have been waiting a year and four months or whatever to see you live. It's it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, just, why don't you play us a song? Uh, we sure. the, the way I kind of do is we talk a little bit and then we play a song and then we just kind of go back and forth. So, um, okay. I love uh, this, this 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 song uh, is I've never played this song before. I wrote I wrote so I'm a little nervous. Um, but I wrote this song, God, well, since pandemic, it's probably been now two years and it was, um, it was, it was scheduled for a solo project that I was working on, but then I got, you know, pandemic hit and we all had to stop. Yeah. So I've never played this one live. So if I, well, if I screw it up, you never heard it. So, you know. as, as, as Billy Ray Cyrus said to me, all of our gigs got coroned. <laughs> did. I like that. Got ruined. <laughs> So this song is uh, called Regardless, and this is off of my hopefully soon to be record. Turned into chocolate 
And all we had was time. From birth we were the burdens. Imaginary souls. The ghosts that no one wanted. The wonders of it all. Regardless of all the things that were said. Regardless what it did to our heads. Regardless, we've all been here once before. Yeah. Regardless of all the things that were said. Regardless for what it did to our heads. Regardless, it means nothing anymore. Anymore. The last time that I saw you, your bedroom felt like jail. My living room was a lunchbox. Your kitchen couldn't make bail. I know with something simple can leave me so confused. But someone smarter told me, with to win when you're born to lose. Regardless of all the things that were said, regardless for what it did to our head, regardless, we've all been here once before, yeah. Regardless of all the things that were said, regardless for what it did to our head, regardless, no regrets at all. Yeah, man, that was great. I can't wait to hear that uh, on a record. Yeah, me too. <laughs> have you gotten Have you gotten to record it yet? I made a, a like a demo of it, just me. There's a middle eight in it too, with a bunch of voices. But I'm I'm not a bunch of voices, so I, I left that part out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, one of the things you have been though is voices for others. Yeah, um, sure as I have too more recently. <laughs> uh than you but i i did it for one other uh, one other thing besides the rakuten commercial but so um there was a show first of all so you got to sing as yourself on the show the heights uh yeah which that was on was that on fox that was a fox uh series um aaron spelling um show and so it took place it took place in the beverly hills 90210 verse right Sorta. Of. It, it, <laughs> it was. It was kind of. There was a period after nine hundred two when it was big, where Aaron Spelling was was creating other shows with young kids, and uh, one of these was a musical about a working class neighborhood somewhere, maybe the East Coast. It was never really specified, and he wanted to. Uh, he wanted to cast actors who could play, or musicians who could act, which was kind of what I was. Yeah, no, that's great. And there's an unnamed was, city called the Heights and the band was called the Heights. So that's all I, I remember it well. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, yeah, cynicism, that was that was me on the Rakuten ad. That's funny because when people know that it's me, they they immediately figure it out. But there's so many people that have seen that ad and didn't know it was me because I mean, you know, look, it's another person sing, technically yeah. singing. Um, which is what happened uh, on the show California Dreaming, right? Yeah, yeah. California Dreams uh, was, was a Saturday morning show from the same producers of Saved by the Bell. And again, it was a show, but they didn't get actors who could sing or play. Uh, well, the males couldn't. And so because I had worked with the uh, musical supervisor on that was the same guy that did The Heights. So he called me and he said, you know, would you want to be the singing voice for this lead actor? I think his name is Aaron Jackson. And I went, yeah, sure. Sounds like a great gig. So I would go down and, and we would record, I don't know, about twice a week for each episode. And I did that for two years. Um, Demono, who's one of my moderators, like he sort of helps me when like, just basically handle the crowd 
if there's somebody unruly, he knocks him out or, you know, yeah. helps me on my request days. He said he used to love watching California Dreams. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, you heard I, Zach's voice then. Uh, yeah, I, and then I, uh, the funny, the, the, so a while ago you had a band called AMFM. Yeah. And you guys did It's Magic. Yeah, we and did. And then I saw, <laughs> I saw that horrible Otesla commercial where they oh, yeah oh oh oh, oh Tesla. <laughs> and I, I like had to take a i had to take a screenshot of it i remember you said that to me it was just like worst use of this song <laughs> yeah, I know that. yeah that's the last that's the bad taste in your mouth that one yeah it happens um yeah that was okay. a good band that was a band a bunch of la session guys when everybody would get off the road or not be working and we said let's just do some fun like 70s arena rock and do it live and not have any tapes and stuff and, and just stretch our muscles while we're not working those are the best things like um you know even like uh ultimate jam night at the whiskey yeah. um you know stuff like that is there so many amazing players that uh you know oh maybe they're in town this week or yeah. you know uh, maybe the guitarist from the jimmy kimmel show will come down and play you know um i i love that kind of thing where people that just we, we look we're musicians we love to play you know i mean exactly. i I started doing this um, almost a year ago, and you know I'm doing it. the The advantage is like my chops are up, and you know keeps everything fresh and doing it. But okay. we do it because we love to perform. So yeah, um, and we need and we need to play. I mean, it's, it sucks when you, when the worst thing for me for pandemic was that I I was not that I was getting fat, which I was, but, but it was just not, me too. my fingers were getting lazy and, and I, and I wasn't singing and, and I wasn't writing. I just was like existing and I had no motivation and, you know, it was a drag, just not, not interacting, you know, with each other. Yeah. Um, and speaking of, I guess I'll play my second song. Go for it, dude. Now. I will mute you. Um, I haven't done this one in a while, so, uh, I'm going to, do this one is from uh, the in the wasteland record um the last song on that called finding my way in the dark well, i'm lost in the dark danger all around me i won't get very far oh i've no eyes to see they said look for the light oh how can i find lord Things they just don't seem right. Show how to swallow. I could stand here and wait for things to get better. They say I should have fed mine over me. I'm just reaching up my head. And yeah, I'm trying. Why the things that I do push me back to where I began? I'm just searching for the truth. All my heartache that I've been through, there's no more I can say. I'm just finding my way in the dark. When I'm down on my knees, trying to crawl out, digging in. It's cold in the fish like Why don't you got my back? Lord, it may get on track Yeah, I'm some bread's for the attack I could stand here and wait for things get better They say I should have been, but I found Just reaching up my head Yeah, and I'm trying to understand Why the things that I do Push me back to where I began I'm just searching for the truth Now the heartache that I've been through There's no more I can say I just find my way in the dark
Yeah, brother, that was great. Thanks, man. Hey, really quick, I want to thank. Uh, I got some more subscribers uh, a, a few minutes ago. I want to thank Azur uh azrael office monkey thanks for 10 months area flame thanks for four months derper thanks for seven months so i call my community millers chillers because we're all yeah, just dude. chilling here we're all yeah. chilling like villains oh. but what i see paul gargano in the chat is he uh, here he's in the chat he's, he's in he's in the chat and Where so um we, we I, we've got to laugh about how paul didn't realize that we knew each other <laughs> and so he would be like, yeah, like there would be a couple times when he was in Vegas. And for those of you who don't know, Paul is my manager, my music manager. And uh, and he would and he'd be like, yeah, I don't know. He would describe his friend Zach in Vegas. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I finally figured it out. He says, hi, I oh. finally figured out that it was the same, the same Zach. That's hilarious. You know? uh, I, I think when he mentioned that you were an actor, but the funniest part is. Paul also saw the movie that we made together and I still didn't, that. I don't think he realized that that was you right. then. Yeah. So it, it, uh, it's just funny. And um, we got to talk about that movie. We do. Uh, it was called everyday Joe. It was a short film that, uh, that my friend had written and it starred me and uh, you were the villain. I was the I was and, the villain in it, and Persia White from the show Girlfriends and um, Vampire Diaries, yeah, uh, was in it also. And we actually filmed part of it here, yeah, because I pretended to throw you off of a <laughs> of a ledge, but it was quite convincing. I it looked real. It really looked real. It it played really well. Yeah, and we won uh, best. What did we win? We won like best movie. We won, uh, yeah, we won Best Picture at the North Hollywood Film Festival. Yeah, because it because that was the one and only time that the North Hollywood Film Festival existed. <laughs> grand opening, grand closing. <laughs> mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's called Everyday Joe. I think it's on YouTube now. I think it's it is definitely on it's on our it's on our uh, IMDb's for sure. You know, it's funny, dude. I was I was when you were playing. I was just thinking about making the movie and just how much we laughed. We just laughed all the time. We laughed the whole time. And it was like this real serious, I mean, you know, I'm trying to kill you. and But it was just, I just, we, I just couldn't stop laughing. We just couldn't stop making each other laugh the whole time. We blew so many takes. And I, I'm, I'm clean shaven in that yeah. movie. And I wear like a fake balding wig. Right. God, it was so good. I wore That's like a fake balding wig and then another wig on top of it. Yeah. Because I was trying to pretend to not, I don't know. It, yeah, it was. Uh, thanks for the sub, uh, Risu. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So I, we, we jokingly, that, that movie had a, a, a secret name too. We called it Slingboard. Slingboard. Uh, because we, uh, one of us hits the other one with a board. I can't even I remember. Think, I think I was supposed to hit, no. I actually, I actually hit you accidentally. Yeah, you did accidentally hit me. That that's, sucked. I remember. I remember. It's in the film. Hey, I mean, if the shot works, right? Yeah, yeah it worked. But I was like, I was. Was it with? Was it with the board? I don't remember. I don't remember. No, I think you accidentally just hit me with your fist, which is fine. Awesome. Sorry. Uh, but the board, the board, we made it look like I got hit with the board. Yeah. All right. But we just started yeah. talking about the movie Sling Blade, and then it became Sling Board. Sling Board. I'm going to take out the Sling Board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of that. We started talking about Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. I like the way he talked. There's so many great outtakes. I know the outtakes are on YouTube right now, just us cracking the hell up. No oh, good. Yeah, yeah, there should be. It better be. You know, I saw Billy Bob Thornton years later uh, at an event, and I could have walked up and talked to him, but. I don't know. I got chickened out and yeah. I usually don't chicken out at those things. Like I'll walk yeah. up to anybody and just start talking to him. He's intimidating, man. I met him at, at some event and he was like looking through me and I just, that went. was it. Like I was like, yeah. I could go talk to him right now, but he yeah. looks like he wants to kick everyone's ass. hundred percent. It was like Dracula. He was just like, so I was like, all he right. Did. Gonna... I was going to say that he had kind of a Dracula vampire vibe and look, I love vampires, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then like when you see a real one in real life, yeah. <laughs> Then you're a little so you're like, okay, I'm not sure about this. Yeah. Um, so, uh, sling board. Yeah, sling board. You've got a show before you go back out on tour with Corey. You have a show um, 
in Vegas right now. Yeah, I play in a show at the Mosaic Theater on the Strip, which is a beautiful, beautiful old theater, not in a hotel or casino um, on the Las Vegas Strip. And the show's called Queens of Rock. And the uh, the girl that's the singer is a is a, a, an amazing singer from Montreal named Elizabeth Diega. And we play Thursdays through Mondays, 7 to 8. And she does a tribute to all the big female rock singers of, of all time. And I play bass. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Because Vegas is pretty much back in business, right? Dude, we're like, it feels like we're at 75% capacity right now, but we're probably at 50. But it feels like we're back open, just everyone's wearing masks. Well, I mean, I'm glad that everybody can work, you know, because that city relies yeah. so much on people coming to it. Yeah, it was, it was really, it was nuts. For, for this city to be closed was really crazy, especially for the musicians and the, and the singers and dancers and stuff. That was, yeah, it was a tough time. I mean, it's a tough time everywhere. But, right. But yeah, now we're five nights a week now. So yeah, anyone who comes to Vegas, come on down to Mosaic. But besides the performers, I mean, like the hotel workers and. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. Dude, I drove down the strip like month three or something of pandemic, and it was like a set of the movie. It was like it was like Omega Man or something. It was some futuristic. Everything was, all the lights were off. You know, nobody's home. Just mm -hmm. vacant buildings from for two miles. Wow. It's really weird. Wow. Really creepy. Well, yeah. hopefully there's a light They're at the end of the tunnel. Awesome. Yeah. Well, now it's just pumping. You go down there now, and everybody's just out and doing stuff. So you know. Um, All right. And I don't know what our numbers are like, but I guess I guess the vaccine's working and everybody is uh, is good. And I'm I'm like I said before, I'm a mask Nazi. So I mean, I just always <laughs> wear my mask, and you know, I never take it off unless I'm performing. So yeah, it's a new way to to live. But like I was saying earlier, like I can't see myself not wearing a mask on a plane. Like, yeah, forever, I mean, ever. I know because it makes perfect sense. I haven't gotten the flu. I haven't gotten a cold. And get sick. Oh, year. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and they, you know, it's kind of how Japan has been rolling all these years. And, you know, people think it's silly that they all wear masks on the subway, but you know what? They don't get sick. And so, right. So, yeah. we for that. Hopefully, we'll learn. We should probably play another song. I think it's your turn. <laughs> My turn. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Well, I was thinking about doing, uh, This is an old Aerosmith song that I always wanted to cover. And it's like old meaning like second record. Yeah, do it. Wait, hold on. Let's go. Mom! 
far, far away. Heed my candle, John, for the day. Seasons are with her, John, to her sin. Seasons are with her. so bad for you Oh, what is me I feel so sad for you Time bound to lose your mind And on borrow time Take the wind right out of That's awesome, man. You know, there's so many hidden gems on those old Aerosmith records. Yeah, that's off Get Your Wings. I had the I had the crazy day of recording Joe Perry. Um Oh shit, really? About five years ago. Wow. For um a Billy Ray Cyrus song. Um wow. and uh actually for about four songs, because it, it was it was on a Billy Ray Cyrus album that I was co-producing and uh, he was like, Hey, I think Joe Perry's going to come into the studio. I'm like, what? <laughs> Joe Perry? Yeah. Like, the, Joe Jimmy like Aerosmith Perry. Yeah. Like Joe Aerosmith. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that no, was Joe crazy... Perry, the delicatessen owner. Not that. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. Oh, that one. No, no. Like Joe Perry. And uh, man, I was nervous. I was so nervous that day. And uh, it worked out great, but it was very, it was just, I was nervous. I was, I was just nervous, you know, like I here's like a bona fide guitar hero. And now like, we're gonna wait, we're recording him. What? <laughs> you know, it's surreal. Yeah. Real. Yeah. And then like, you know, he'll, he comes in and like his guitar tech comes first and sets everything up you know it was very it, yeah it was like to, it, there was nothing casual about it you know right, right, it's just yeah. like, he's coming at this time with this person this guy's coming soon you know right, like, like i i remember i had like an intern at the recording studio like wait in the parking lot i'm like you just stand in that spot until they show up like no one parks in that spot you're just standing there just to make sure everything went right and um yeah he's joe perry yeah he's joe perry and you know you you hear those familiar licks when and yeah it, it, was, it was just it was surreal man it was that's great dude. that's great you had that opportunity yeah yeah i've got a great picture and there you know of course the management was like no pictures and so of course i was like sneaking pictures i don't care it's been you know if anyone's gonna come after me uh, and then we were allowed to take a picture at the end. So, but oh. I have a couple of awesome pictures of him just like rocking out. I want to see pictures of you like sneaking pictures of Joe. <laughs> yeah, that that'd be the best one. I'll see if uh, Stuart, who I co-produced it with, I'll th see if he shot me sneaking. He probably did. Oh wow, well, yeah, I'm he sure he did. one on me, sneaking one on Joe and everyone I'm else. Sure, he did, dude. I mean, come on. I'm telling Joe Perry. You should. Yeah, you're so <laughs> sure. Well, since you play the cover, I'm gonna play one too. All right. So uh, this is one that I found, I don't know, I, I really, really, as, as somebody who's written a lot of country songs and written country songs with a lot of people in Nashville and everything else, um, you pay so much attention. I pay more attention to lyrics than I ever have. Mm -hmm. And I went back and listened to a lot of old Iron Maiden yeah, uh, and realized how brilliant their lyrics were, right? Yeah. Um, and so I have taken a couple of their songs and 
like applied them acoustically. So, uh, so here's this one. I can't wait for this. Here's this one. Here we go. From the coast to gold, across the seven seas, I'm traveling on. second you started it i was like good choice i uh i i i posted like a minute of that on tiktok because that's all tiktok will let you do is a minute yeah uh and then i i posted to a couple other places and on facebook it keeps getting shared but people either love it or they hate it which i think is also good yeah yeah Uh, you know when people hate it that's good and uh you know so people are like oh that's great or they're like you're not iron maiden don't play that like they get so mad Territorial. But, screw it i'm uh, glad any, any, any other... mad it shares it more yeah there you go stick it, <laughs> yeah. it makes the algorithm work harder <laughs> i mean anybody that likes iron maiden for all the right reasons would, would, would love what you just did I mean, it's it's a great song and you're showing that you know it's not just a great metal song it's a great song that's what I even wrote in the description i'm like Iron Maiden applies itself acoustically, you know, like, yeah, yeah it's because uh, I think it was, I can't remember who said it, but, you know, and it's probably been said uh, many times that a great song will sound great if it's just sung with an acoustic guitar and a vocal. Yeah, you know? that's kind of the mark of a great song. If you can accomplish that, where you sing it with an acoustic guitar and a vocal, then you have the guts of a, of a great song. And Iron Maiden writes great songs. They, they play them in a metal style, but they're, it's like Motorhead. I always used to tell people Motorhead were never really a metal band. They were, they have, there's more country influences if you dig deep and, you know, 
look under the racket, most of, almost every Motorhead song could be a country song. In fact, there's a shit ton of country. There's a lot of country song, country Motorhead versions. Yeah. It's like outlaw country and, and it's just crank. And there's, you know, it's like, you, it, sometimes people just hear the arrangement and they go, oh, that's metal or, oh, that's this. And they don't realize that there's, there's, you know, there's, there's other things going on until you do something like that. You deconstruct it. Mm -hmm. So well done. Thanks, man. I might, I might record that. I've been thinking oh, dude, about you totally record that. Yeah. So, Definitely. um, I've been, uh, putting out, I, I was, I was able to, um, I'm trying to think of what, so I have a songwriting show on Tuesdays on a different Twitch channel on Codename Games. And, uh, so what I do is I write a song live every week with the audience. That's cool. And so Codename puts out a game called Idle Champions and Idle Champions licenses characters from Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. So every week we just pick a different um, character from the game and from D&D &D to write about. That's great. And it's like a great exercise in songwriting for me. It keeps my songwriting right. chops up. Yeah. The, the, the show's two hours. So we have to make all these really fast decisions because we need to finish the song in two hours, no matter what. Wow. Um, so you have a and deadline. Have, and, and, right. You know. So I have a co-host, Dylan, who works for the game company, who knows everything about the lore. And now he's a songwriter because we've done like 32 episodes or 31 or two. So like, you're a songwriter now, dude. Uh, and then the audience will, will, you know, sometimes they'll give us entire lines, right. you know, but they'll definitely uh, be like, oh, you know, he wouldn't think that way. He would think this way or she wouldn't do that. She would do this. And, and so it's almost like you're making like a, a in a way like an op, like a rock opera. Absolutely. And so the coolest thing is this. So the game company then commissioned me to record eight of the songs fully, and now they're in the game. That's awesome, dude. And you can get the soundtrack too. Uh, so it's it's like a cool added thing that uh, I never thought would stem from from this. And that's another thing that the pandemic sort of, you know, innovation. Yeah, yeah you find a way. Mm -hmm. You find like, a way to be creative and, and find a way to make good work. And stuff. But that's a real smart idea. Just... To have a lot of people around a theme and then a deadline that you can't, you know, that you it's not right. a way, you have to finish this by this time. And you don't want to repeat yourself either. So that, that, that's a little hard sometimes. It's great though. Cause you, you force yourself to find forces for me, the best way to, for, that I get anything done. If I have to do it. Yeah. Even if it's a fake deadline, I have to give myself deadlines. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll always, I'm, I'm glad when people give me deadlines cause then that forces me to work really, really hard. Yeah, that was that's my biggest problem, man. Unless I give myself deadlines, I just, you know, I just flounder. So uh, yeah, I have to do the same thing. I have to go. It has to be done by this time. I get it. That's well, we should crack on with the songs because I think I don't want to. Uh, my producer Sean and and director has another show to produce. Yeah. yeah. After us, so let's do let's the uh, let's see how we can't duet. I know, I know. I wish we could. We need Source Connect or something. And then we would, and then we could, we would be able to hear each other at the same time, but it's a very expensive piece of software. <laughs> we need a license and we both need super, super fast computers. And... It's a lot of upgrading. Yeah. <laughs> but play anything you want, man. You know, it's funny. I was doing this, um, I used to do this Fleetwood Mac tune just to keep my fingers. In yeah. Place. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Oh, shit. Sorry. Lindsey Buckingham. I mean. Yeah. Oh, I love that song. Okay. So let's see if I can do it. I don't know. If oh, wait. Before you start, yeah. you just got raided. So what happens in, in Twitch, you, you haven't been on Twitch before. Hi, Jan. Uh, we got raided. And what that means is like when we're done, we'll take our audience to someone else's channel. Oh, cool. So right now, uh, my friend Jen is signing off for the night with what she was streaming. So she raided our channel and just brought 16 more viewers oh, to the show. Sure. So welcome to Miller's Music Mondays, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, and uh, my guest today is Zach Throne, and he was just about to play a song. 
So I, I was waiting for all 16 of you to join us. So thank you for joining us. And uh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> see if this works. <laughs> okay. No pressure. <laughs> So far, so good. Been down one time, been down two times. Ooh, I'm never going back again. Ooh. You don't know. <laughs> that's a tough one man you did it you did oh uh, yeah kind of Lindsay, look Lindsay buckingham is so good yeah, that every he, time he quits fleetwood mac they have to replace him with two people it's happened yeah. like four times at yeah. least it's always it, at least two people sometimes three people yeah 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 that's just a fun one to do try i know yeah i love that song um was that on rumors or was that on the self-titled one that's on rumors. Every song it's on that like a album perfect is, record is amazing. Yeah, actually, the the, the self titled and and uh, rumors I think are both like just Incredible. straight out of the park. And then Tusk, they were like, we're gonna get weird. Yeah, he got you all know? new wavy on Tusk. Mm -hmm. But they still, I mean, they, there's there's a lot of winners on Tusk, but but uh, but there's also ones where you're like. Okay, they made a they made a choice there. Yes, they should. <laughs> yeah. They made that it got, choice. It got it got kind of it got kind of weird on that one. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um I'm trying to decide what my last song is going to be. Um All right, yeah, I'm going to grab or yeah, I'm going to grab this other guitar real quick. Yep. I know. Get my head on that. All right, got to remember. You got a real uh, backdrop now, dude. I know. It's Everything you, you see is real. Real wood now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Real wood. I'm gonna for my for my last song. So this song I wrote this like seven years ago, and it's it's on my it's on my new record. But I wrote it a really long time ago. And it was one where like for the last record, it was in the running, but if anyone knows about like being signed to a label, especially like a major label that gets bought a label that then gets bought by a major label, right. you've got to, when, when you're, when you're right, when you're, when you're writing for the album, you've got an A&R uh, rep that will decide often um, like what, what songs they like and what songs they think fit. And so this one, um, I always really believed in this song, but it just didn't fit on the right. last record for whatever reason, but it's still a badass song. And I, my friend, Kurt Gazaris, who runs a really successful podcast about being a character actor in Hollywood. Uh, you've seen him in everything. He's always like, he's a villain on Hawaii Five O, And then uh -huh. he's, he's a cop on law and order for four episodes. And you know what I mean? Like he's one, he's, he, those are the guys that I admire the, that I admire the most in Hollywood that, you know, constantly jumping from job to job and still surviving and still making it work. Yeah. You know, 
um and his podcast is called what's my name again <laughs> and, and, and it's really great and and this song is kind of about about struggling and sort of just trying to make it in the world and so i gave it to him as a theme song for his podcast cool. and then i finally decided to put it he's like all you know his podcast started taking off and he's like people are asking where they can get this song and i'm like yeah. I'm putting it on the next record Good, so i did and and it is on it's on this record um from the wreckage part awesome, one. Dude. And this is it. It's called uh, Losing My Way. Every time I try to stand, I just keep falling over. I can try to pull my bootstraps up, but I can't stop getting older. Oh, and you know how that goes. Every day I grab the wrong above me on that ladder. Then I slip three notches down to pretend that it don't matter. doggy great song thanks man uh mr sam says he loves this track and mr sam actually made he's in, he's in chat right now he made the album cover he, oh really kind of does the art for all my albums oh yeah. that's bad a great so. cover there it is oh perfect sean's got a got the card <laughs> so everyone can see that mr sam sheeran badass artist um so um yeah man uh before you play your last song um everyone can see you on tour soon yeah which is exciting uh, we are the Corey taylor band will be on the road um may 17th through june 24th or 25th and um we're playing uh all through the midwest and the south and then back here I've now had half the band on the on the show. I probably I should try to get Corey on the show eventually. Yeah, just need Corey, Tooch, and uh, and Dustin, and, and yeah, we'll the, get uh, we'll get everybody one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, okay, so that's exciting. So if you live in if you live in the South or the Midwest, be sure to check out uh, 
the Corey Taylor band, uh, yeah, it's gonna be starring fun. Zach Throne. It that's the that's that's the the whole title, right? The Corey Taylor band yeah, featuring, featuring Zach Throne, right? Oh totally, yeah, that that'll yeah. go over really well. And you get like a you get like a thirty minute guitar solo in the middle. Totally, dude. That's how I roll, man. Actually, yeah. I opened the show with a thirty minute guitar solo. Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before Corey even comes on, right? I'm showing off my chops. Well, I remember I, when, at, at at the L.A. show, uh, at the whiskey show, he had like a stand up comedian come out and say that he was Corey's manager. Yeah, it's great guess. And that he wasn't going to be there or something. Like, I forgot what he said, but he pissed the whole crowd off. Well, he, he it was Craig Gass, and he's a friend of the band's, and he would go out because we did like a run of shows. We did like seven shows, and, and he went with us and announced something different every night. He goes, Hi, I'm Corey Taylor's manager, and I just want to let you guys know that uh, Corey's a little under the weather. He might not be here tonight, or whatever, you know, just yeah, yeah. stir the pot. And, what? Yeah, every night, and it was just like, oh, no. And he made up nicknames for all of us. And, and uh, oh, and he, oh, there's one where he said, I forgot what city, but he goes, Okay, so now we're recording a live record. So you guys are going to be on a live Corey Taylor album. And it, and he's not the manager. We're not recording a lot. There's no recording equipment anywhere. And I was like, <laughs> he just got everybody. That's that's what you do when you get a, when you bring a stand up comedian. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> um, well, we've got time for one more song, and I always let my guests have the last oh. song. So, well, shoot. I'd, um, I hadn't planned on another one, but let's see. Oh, um, uh, Sim- Simplex P- uh, Pachinko wanted to know what your pendant is, but I think I know what it is. Isn't it the inside of a, um, oh, this of a, of a 45 record? This is, uh, yeah, for anybody that is under the age of 45, um, this was what we, what us old timers used to put in our little singles, put on the record. I, it's funny because everywhere I go, if you're, you could tell how old people are because they'll point to that and I go, are you some like weird kind of cult, religion, Aztec, sort of Egyptian, onk, something or other, you know, they, they don't know what it is. <laughs> right. And when people know it, they get really excited. He said touche. <laughs> 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 That's great. <laughs> See you. This one. Give him one second. Not a problem. This is a replacement song that I used to like to play. I don't think I've ever really sung it, so. Don't move at all like a subway. It's got bums when it's cold like any other day. It's warm up inside. Sitting down and waiting for the ride. Can you meet the skyway? It don't move at all like a subway. It's got bums when it's cold like any other day. It's warm up inside. Sitting down and waiting for a ride. Beat the skyway. Then one day I saw you walking down that little one way With my stupid hat and gloves at night I lie awake Wondering if I'll sleep Wondering if we'll meet out in the street Beneath the skyway
That was beautiful, man. Thank Good you. Job. The replacements are a band that um like if you know them, you love them, but they haven't always gotten the most attention that they should have. You know what I mean? Yeah, they were kind of like the uh for me that was sort of where I went, okay, I, I want to write songs. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, instead of like being like the shreddy shreddy McShreddy, shreddy Van Halen kind of guitar player, I just went, okay, I don't want to that's not so important. It's I want to be good. Right, the song is so much more important. I just love to be a good songwriter and, and like that. So yeah, that was like really inspiring. And I, I was just butting with it before we did this. So I went, oh, maybe I'll try it. Well, um, yeah. That was fun, dude. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. I also use this show as a way for me to hang out with my friends that I haven't seen yeah, in a long right, time. Right. So this works out well. Um, yeah. But maybe I'll try to come to Vegas when you when you play. Yeah, man, you please know, do. There's I'll be fully be... vaxxed at that point. I'm halfway there. Whoa! <laughs> uh, but, uh, whoa, sorry. Easy, uh, I think easy, I put this easy. too close to me. Uh, I Let me, I want to I wanna just uh, say thank you to to you for coming on. Thanks to Sean uh, thank you for, for directing. And, and thank you, Sean. Whole thing possible. Oh, thanks to my mom. My mom's in chat. My mom says hi. Right on. Uh, she's in Florida. Oh, yeah. She wanted to know, are you playing in Florida? No, we're not going. This, uh, I think the furthest east we go is Detroit or Joliet. Okay. Sorry, mom. Not Sorry. Going next time. Next time. Next time, yeah. Um, but so now what we're going to do is we're going to raid someone else. And cool. uh, I noticed that my friend Alex Ward is on, and he's actually playing a video game because you can play video games on here and what people watch. But Alex has been in two of my music videos, oh, so right I'm totally gonna raid him. Uh, Let's raid him. We need to, and uh, let me get it all typed in. So everyone else watching, I'll be back. Uh, I'll be uh, tomorrow on Codename Games, and I'll be back here on Wednesday night for whatever you want Wednesdays. I have a list, Zach, of about 165 songs that I know how to play. Nice. And people just request, and I just play them, and it's so much fun. That's great, man. And I'm just talking with fun. everybody. I, I'm um, so happy that you're taking the time to just be creative and and do this. It's it's, it's a great fun idea. I, I'm happy I got to do it. I'm happy yeah, I'm happy you got to do it too, and I'll have to have you back on. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to, man. Yeah, so either I'll see you here or I'll see you um, down the road soon. Definitely, dude. I can't wait to see it in the flesh. And here we go. Good night, everybody. We're ready now. Thanks for having me. Here we go.